Greetings, YouTube. Today we're looking at Thunderstruck by Eric Larson. Now, um, Eric Larson is the author of The Devil in the White City, and it says right here, the number one New York bestseller author of New The Devil in the White City, which is an excellent book, and sat on that one that, that bestseller list for something like two years with good reason. And it dealt with the Chicago's World's Fair and a serial killer who was using that community as his hunting ground. Um, and in a similar vein, Eric Larson's doing the same thing here. He's doing a parallel story. So the, just as the first book dealt with one line, which is this, the, the building, the, the planning, the building, the execution, and the, and the, and the, the whole process of the, of the fair, and the other line being the serial killer that was hunting in that area at that time. And in this, he is doing a parallel story between Marconi and a killer named Dr. Crippen. Um, spoiler, it's happened well over 100 years ago, uh, so I don't really think it's big a deal. If you, if you don't want to get any more uh, uh, hints about uh, or spoilers about Dr. Crippen, you might want to stop reading this right now. Um, but I love this man's writing so damn much. The book I read before this was called Gut. I, that review is on my uh, channel as well. And the author is, the book is interesting and very informative, but the author is a better researcher than she is a writer. It's just informative. It's, it's entertaining. Reading this, just like in the first four paragraphs, was like sliding into a warm bed. The one that, you're, that your partner just got out of. And it's just so wonderfully comfortable. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that's good. That's, good. that's what his writing is to me. Um, unfortunately, half the book deals with Marconi. And I found a lot of the Marconi sections really hard to read. Not because of Larson. Larson's writing is beautifully they are, is beautiful. It's a, it's a it's it's a joy to read. No, the reason I had a hard time reading some of the Marconi stuff is because Marconi was an idiot. Now, why do I say that? You're thinking he's a great man. He invented radio. Well, he discovered how to harness electromagnetic waves to transfer information. Marconi didn't have a clue what he was doing. And what do I mean when I say that? He had no scientific knowledge. He had no theory behind anything he did. No math behind anything he did. He had an idea of how it worked. And he just poked. Until he made something work. He was excellent at an incredible level of determination and a willingness to try anything that... that it had to be done to make it function. He was an engineer to the core, but he didn't have any idea what he was doing. And he even admitted this during his life. But that's the not that's not the part why I say he's an idiot. He earned the or shared the Nobel Prize in physics for his contribution to radio. Okay? Or as they call it at the time, a wireless uh telegraphs, telegrams. Um, but if there has been a Nobel Prize in stepping on one's own dick, he would have won that one all by himself. Because wherever there was an opportunity in Marconi's life to alienate someone, he took it. He pushed away every single person that could have not only helped him, but furthered his desire to succeed at his business. Because that's what Marconi was in. He was in the business of wireless communication. He wanted to own it, patent it, and be the only game in town. He was a tech bro. And I say that with derision, because that's not a good term. Um, and even the people who were his allies, he eventually alienated them to, them to the point where they became his antagonists or even his enemies. He just had no people skills. And at every opportunity where he could have helped himself, 
He shot himself in the foot again and again and again. Yeah, he became a millionaire at 23. But then he was almost completely broke after having gotten married. He just, he made a lot of promises. He was very secretive and he was very exclusionary. Now, just imagine if when Apple came out with their original iPhone, they had said, okay, this is an awesome phone, but you'll only be able to use it to call other iPhones. That's it. You could only call other iPhones. Do you think Apple would have become as big as it was? Do you think the iPhone would have become as big as it was? No, it wouldn't have. People would have laughed at them. But that's what Marconi wanted to do. He wanted to have a system set up. So if he got a contract with someone that said, like, for like a shipping line, you have to use our equipment for your shipping line. And that, that kind of an exclusionary contract is fine. But what he wanted to do is that you could only send messages from our transmitters and only receive those messages on our receivers. You may not send or receive messages from any other form of radio equipment. And that's absurd. That's not how radio frequency works. Um, I, found it, I found it sweetly ironic as, as I'm reading this at work, because I read the, my nonfiction books at work, that I'm listening to a set of headphones, radio headphones, just have a little antenna sticking off my head. All the while, he is desperately trying to figure out why he can't get his radio signal to go beyond a certain distance. Well, first of all, he was trying to get transatlantic distances with long wave radio signals, where short wave radio signals are far, far better at that. I have a short wave radio in my, in my closet. It's about the size of this book, and I can pick up Russia with it. And it's a hand crank. It's an emergency radio. Awesome. Uh, I've reviewed that on my my site as well, on my on my channel as well. Um, so the Marconi section was very interesting, but again, he was not an agreeable person, and he became kind of less agreeable over time. He didn't treat his first wife well. They ended up getting a divorce and an annulment, so he could marry a second woman. And he tried to. He was actually engaged at age fifty one to a seventeen year old, which is super creepy. I don't care if it was the early portion of the 20th century. Super creepy. He eventually married someone a little older, and in fact, Italian nobility, so his daughter became a princess. That was kind of cool. And Larson actually got to interview Marconi's daughter. That is awesome. Um, so the Marconi section of the book was fascinating, but why is it here? It's here because Dr. Crippen was the first criminal hunted by and apprehended because of radio. He committed a crime. He tried to escape, but he couldn't because of radio. Now, you're trying to think, well, actually, a very small portion of this book, and it's not. It's half the book because you learned the entire depth of Dr. Crippen's life from, from his parents, through his medical degrees. He has tomeopathy, which is BS, but at the time it was considered a legitimate form of medicine. Um, and his, his traveling from the United States to go, he went to, 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 to London. Uh, he was uh, a person that sold medication. He worked for um, drug companies, patent drug companies, and he sold snake oil for the most part. Things that did not work, you know, medications you could buy over the counter for like, you know, to cure your, uh, your, your, your deafness. You know, that doesn't work that way. He was a snake oil man, a salesman, but he knew chemistry. And for example, he knew which particular chemicals you could buy that are incredibly, unbelievably deadly poisons. Yeah. Um, and it was perfectly legal from the biome at the time because he was a doctor and a pharmacist. So perfectly legal for him to buy these these poisons because in incredibly small di diluted amounts and mixed with other things, they could be used as medications to, for, to help people. He actually could, you know, sub sub uh, uh, prescribe things that worked, but a lot of the time he was just pushing snake oil and often dangerous snake oil. In fact, one of the companies he was working for went bankrupt because they ended up. Uh, pushing a hearing aid treatment which caused someone to have a ear infection so bad it went into their brain and killed them. Yeah, mm -hmm. not good. 
So he was in, an, in, in a bad marriage, and he eventually found love with a, his receptionist. A real, not a real original story there. Her whose name was Ethel, and eventually he and Ethel ran away. And the, and the thing that struck me about this is that Ethel was quite possibly the most guileless human being that's ever lived. Because after having spent six hours having a conversation with detectives from Scotland Yard, and them deciding, ah, he he hasn't really done anything. Um, the doctor, the good doctor, said, "Hey, let's go to America and go look for my ex my estranged wife who ran away from me." But if we do that, we're going to need to use assumed names. And would you dress as a sixteen-year-old boy for me? And she just said yes and went along with it. Didn't didn't seem to question it at all. Why why he would want to like immediately stop wearing his glasses and shave off his mustache to make himself look different. Or why she was asked to cut her hair off and dress as a 16-year-old boy, which it worked, because she, I guess apparently she passed off as a 16-year-old boy quite well. Um, she, but she was never found culpable of anything, and four months after uh, his trial was acquitted and went on to uh, eventually marry a guy and have children. And um, he, the, her husband never, ever knew about her past because she changed her name and never told him. Um so that was that was interesting. She was she was uh, she was guileless, and Crippen may go down in history as one of the greatest and coldest liars that's ever lived, because he could look you straight in the eye and tell you something with absolute and utter conviction, and you would believe him. And he was lying. He was just that good. Um, the author comments about seeing a picture of Crippen at some social event because his wife was in the theater community and uh and he's sitting there and he's got like literally got like a woman on either side from showgirls and stuff around him and you know it was a it was a party and everyone's happy but he's staring right at the camera and the author described him as his, his eyes were just dead there was there was a lot going on inside him and it was not good and he unfortunately married a woman, which apparently pushed all the wrong buttons in him. Um, and eventually, things didn't turn out too, too, uh, too good for her. This is an incredibly good book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's got a great deal of back of information, footnotes, and an index, extensive. So you need, if, if there's a lot of actual factual information here, with, and he gives all the receipts so you can go do your own research and, 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 and further reading on it if you want. Um, I think I may have other one other one of Larson's books in my queue. I have my queue is very long. I need to purge it again. Um, but he is just wonderful. Um, if you have not read uh, The Devil in the White City, go get it, read it, and also read Thunderstruck. He's a beautiful writer. It's thoroughly enjoyable. And uh, I, I cannot recommend Larson um, enough.